All right, on the phone with us right now, legendary Disney Imagineer Joe Rohde, Senior Vice President of Walt Disney Imagineering Creative. And from what I understand, Joe, you are on your way to Mongolia, or are you in Mongolia right now? I am in Mongolia right now. I'm in a hotel room in Ulaanbaatar, uh, which is the capital of Mongolia. Uh, we're here for one night, and we catch a small prop plane tomorrow and fly across most of the country, which is hundreds and hundreds of miles, uh, to western Mongolia, which is the Altai Mountains. Uh, and that's where most of this expedition will take place, in the Altai Mountains. And you are on a mission right now to help raise awareness and money to uh, help save the snow leopard, if I'm, if I'm correct? Yeah, it's snow leopard conservation. This area, the Altai Mountains, first of all, many people don't know, you know, snow leopards are a really peculiar creature, highly mountain-adapted cat. They're actually related to tigers. Uh, they live in extremely remote mountain areas, and they have all these peculiar adaptations. They're really cool. They're super camouflaged. I mean, I've seen one before in the wild and watched it right in front of me like Predator just disappear. Hmm. Just disappear. Not behind a bush, just disappear. Um, fabulous creatures. Um, and, and savable creatures because they live in a place where, you know, we're never going to build condos in these nasty, craggy, snowy mountains. Um, so it's one of these missions that if you put some effort into it can really be successful. Um, and I was going to go to Mongolia anyway. I'm a painter anyway. I just thought, why not do something more purposeful with the journey than simply putter around, you know, painting landscapes. Uh, so it all sort of came together as partly a kind of an aesthetic adventure, uh, a partly a, a serious desire to do something meaningful in conservation, um, and partly I'm going into a very remote area that still could use some survey and examination and description. Um, and I'm a member of the Explorers Club, uh, and so I applied for an Explorers Club flag, and that obliges me. Uh, to produce a report on the area. So there's really kind of three things going on. Wow. Now, um, you know, you, uh, obviously, as the uh, creative force uh, behind Animal Kingdom, your, uh, uh, your interest in conservation and awareness uh, certainly woven into the, the fabric of that project. Uh, what, what is it that you plan to do in Mongolia to raise money? You said you're going to be doing some painting and some, some yeah. landscapes. Yeah, so I have this idea. I'm going to do these very, uh, the biggest paintings I can do. Mon Mongolia is a big place, um, and I feel like it deserves these big paintings. So I'm taking two easels, not one, so I can stretch a canvas that's probably about five feet wide by four feet high. I have to rig it like a tent. Uh, and then in order to get these paintings done, I have to do a painting in a day. I'm trying to do 10 paintings. Uh, I have no more than a day to get these paintings done. So they're going to be very, almost like abstract expression and really brushy, mm. really vigorous paintings. And they're meant to kind of capture the spirit of this wild land that has this wild animal in it. Um, I'm going to try to not use brushes. I'm going to make brushes out of camel hair and horse hair and eagle feathers. And uh, so it should have this really um, raw quality to it. I think it's going to be very exciting that way. Then, once the paintings are done, there's a big art show here in Ulaanbaatar at a gallery called 976 Gallery. Very prestigious. As a matter of fact, the art that's up on the walls right now, which you can see if you go to their website, it's really intimidating because it's really good. Um, and uh, so it'll be up there for one night. It's a one-night show. And then what doesn't sell in Mongolia comes to the U.S., and then I'll sell it there. All the money goes to the Snow Leopard Conservancy, and they give it to this group called Irbis Mongolia, and they spend it on field research and conservation. Oh, um, wow. So I'm trying to field this money directly. Just I learned this from the Disney World Life, uh, Worldwide Conservation Fund. You want the money to go to the field. Uh, to, as deep into the field as you can get, because that's where that money goes the furthest. So this really did <laughs> this this really did kind of evolve from your work with Animal Kingdom. Oh, totally. I mean, uh, you know, I've worked for years with wildlife conservation people, and 
and you know, through the Disney Wildlife Conservation Fund, we do all kinds of stuff for conservation. And I was early on involved in pushing the idea that we should have a conservation fund, uh, that we should, you know, tie Animal Kingdom to a conservation fund. Um, but I hadn't, I haven't had the opportunity to do anything of any scale on my own. You know, mm-hmm. that, that was. Uh, I've done a few paintings for donations to auctions and things like that, but nothing of this scale. Uh, and I wanted to go to Mongolia anyway, um, and I thought it would just be a more meaningful trip and actually be a bigger adventure if I could turn it into something like this. And so that's kind of where it all came from. Awesome. That's just awesome. And I, although you can't see me, I'm proudly wearing my Olani polo. Uh, I was <laughs> just out there. I had my Have second. Have you been to Alani? Uh, actually, we had our second trip out to Alani uh, in May. Uh, we did a real big uh, broadcast from there. Uh, did a live broadcast uh-huh. from Alani in May, and it was a huge success for us. And just absolutely, uh-huh. abs- it, it, it is honest to God the best Disney resort in the world. Um, and I, I've been I to pretty much to all of them. I, I think I'm more proud of that than Animal Kingdom. I really think that that is an a important project Very. for us to have done. What impressed me most about that, what impressed me most about that is, is as we would go around Honolulu on, on both my trips, as we would go around Honolulu and just talk to locals, nobody associated with the resort or with Disney. And we would mention Olani, uh, to, to a, a, a one, they all said the same thing. It was the most authentic Hawaiian experience yeah, that they that they've right. seen, yeah. and I think that gives great Couldn't credit have done to you. That without Hawaiians, now um, from what I understand, the largest population of snow leopards uh, exist in China or in areas controlled by China. Uh, is the Chinese government responsive to conservation efforts, uh, uh, protection efforts for the snow leopard? Uh, the Chinese government is doing a really uh, pretty good job with that stuff. Now, this Mongolia, a lot of people don't understand. Mongolia is its own country. It is not part of China. It is Mongolia. Um, and so the, the snow leopard population that we are dealing with, which is Western Mongolia, um, while it is not as large as the total number of snow leopards in China, is, I think, the largest block, um, certainly the largest block in this whole region. That's why it's so important. Um, the Altai Mountains in Mongolia hold a large enough population of snow leopards that if they can be preserved, they can serve as, you know, repopulation seed stock to move them back into even the Altai Mountains that are in Russia and Kazakhstan, um, which are more depleted than the ones in Mongolia. So I don't really have to, you know, it doesn't really touch upon Chinese conservation politics because, guess what, Mongolia is its own country. It's its own country. Um, yeah. Now, one of the reasons these are the, the snow leopards are endangered is because they're poached. They're poached uh, because their uh, their fur is valuable for the fur and for the animal parts. Same as tigers, exactly. And um, the other thing is uh, um, they they run into conflict with herders. That's probably the bigger challenge. Um, the The whole economic nature of herding has changed in Central Asia and Mongolia because of a huge boom in um, the wool industry and specifically cashmere. So herders who used to maybe have 17 goats to keep their family alive now have 400 goats, and each of those goats is worth a fortune to them because they're making cashmere off of them. So the goats get out there. Of course, they eat down the landscape. The native animals that uh, the snow leopard would, you know, largely prey upon, they got to move on. Uh, so the snow leopard is out there, and he's eating a goat. And the guy looks at the goat and thinks, well, there goes my profit and loss statement. I'm going after this snow leopard. Right. Uh, so a lot of the solutions have to do with land management and livestock management. For example, as, as bad as uh, it is to lose an animal to a snow leopard, um, they lose more animals to veterinary problems. So if you fix the veterinary problems, you know, you could balance out the population of animals, you know, better probably than, than just trying to go directly after the snow leopard problem. Um, uh, and snow leopard conservancy and Irbis have a whole series of programs, uh, that they're operating, uh, in this region. They all work with local people because you can't do this. You can't do this without working with local people. The local people are the people who live there. Um, and it's got to be their decision how this goes down and what gets done. Um, now, I, I can't offer expertise in that regard. All I can do is sort of offer 
you know, the thing that I do. I'm an artist. I right. can offer uh, the benefit of this art to do that. And then I sort of have this other sub message of, you know, we're all out here living our lives. Very few of us can interrupt our lives and go off and live in the rainforest and, and save the world that way. But there's all these little things that I believe we really can do while we're living our lives. Um, and these little impacts uh, cumulatively build up, and they can really make a difference. A lot of people don't do anything because they think doing something small isn't going to make a difference. And really, that's it's not true. Um, you know, these small uh, decisions, little decisions that we make. And when I say we, I mean we who live in the more developed world. Right. Our decisions have a huge impact at the other end. It's like navigating a boat on an ocean and making a two-degree change of course. Two degrees isn't much, but it sure is when you get to the other end. So I think it's a thing. It's it's like a attitude about what you can do with yourself. And it's an adventure. I mean, there's no doubt that this is going to be like this cool adventure into the mountains, uh, I, you know, I'm kind of itching for a big adventure, and so I needed to make one. Um, and and it's very hard uh, to get an adventure to happen without a, a solid reason to do it. And, it. and I think this is a good reason. Now, uh, I understand from the press release that was sent out that a snow leopard once saved your hide in a meeting with a Disney executive. Uh, Can you tell me about that? Oh, that was a, I said a big cat, not a snow leopard. Oh, a big That's cat. A okay. tiger story. Yeah, the famous tiger story, you know, where we brought the tiger into the boardroom right. um, years and years ago. Uh, and it is kind of true, you know. I mean, my my whole career hinges on this moment, which is all about the sex appeal of big cats. It's all about this cat, right, walking into a room and nobody being able to trump the cat. <laughs> um, and, and, and the reason that's possible is because it's a wild animal, right? You know that it's wild. You know all the stuff that it represents. It's why I think it's more than just a logical argument. It's more than just a, uh, you know, economic, even an ecological argument. We want these animals to be out there. We want there to be wild animals in the world so we can get that feeling you get when you're around them. Right? Mm -hmm. That's a cool feeling. And if they're not there, we don't get that feeling of wild animals. And that's another thing. You know, Animal Kingdom was built around that, right? Built around this idea of letting people have a little taste of the feeling of what it means to be in a place, you know, with these animals living the way they want to live around you. Um, and the truth is, like Animal Kingdom itself, if we want that to be, it's our responsibility to make it happen. This is not going to happen if we don't make it happen. Exactly. Now, when you, uh, uh, after your trip is done and you return back to the States, uh, if people want to look at the artwork you're creating on this trip or bid on it, buy it, where do you, where do you plan on, on, on featuring it? I don't know the stateside uh, sale condition yet uh, because I don't know how many pieces I'm returning with. Okay. Um, so I'm waiting to see how it goes in Mongolia. Also, the stuff is going to come back to the United States at rolled up canvas. Uh, so I'm going to have to get it, you know, uh, framed up and set up. So there'll be weeks in there for me to figure out where I'm going to place them and how I'm going to liquidate them. Um, and I will, of course, let everybody know on the website and the Twitter site and the YouTube site and all the various sites, um, um, you know, how that's all going down. Um, and then we'll just see. We'll see where it goes. There'll be sketches and there'll be paintings and um, and also I'm videotaping the whole thing. I'm bringing along a very old friend of mine who I've known since I was uh, 14 years old who's a videographer, and we're going to... Um, video document the whole thing and we'll oh. see if there's enough of that there that we can put together uh, at least kind of a YouTube series on it or something. Oh, that'd be incredible. <laughs> that'd be that'd incredible. Be cool. Well, just, I mean, just hearing about this, just hearing about, you know, you, you kind of taking this adventure and, uh, you know, the things that have, have been born from your adventures. Uh, I'm fascinated to see uh, where this goes and, and what you do with it, as I'm sure many, many, many Disney fans will be. Um, you know, we're, 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 we're so, uh, so in awe of some of the work that you have done, especially at animal kingdom and, uh, that what you're doing here and, and the way you're kind of tying this in, uh, 
to your passion is uh, is really admirable and very inspiring. And uh, I well, think, thank you. Like you said, you know, small changes, small small contributions uh, uh, build up and and make a difference. And uh, I think we've seen that. I think everybody's seen that in some way in their own lives, and can certainly yeah. see that here. Um, but, uh, I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very excited to see what you, uh, what you create and what you come back with and, uh, hope you'll give me a crack at bidding on it because I'd love to buy a piece. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and, 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 and as much as I can, I'll be posting even the images online. People will be able to see this happen. When we have a signal, we're going to push stuff out. Uh, so whenever we have a signal, you're going to see this stuff happening uh, and you'll see what I'm working on. Um, and, and, and like I say, I mean, it's, it, it, it's all really part of one big idea. Animal Kingdom is part of a big idea. Aulani is part of a big idea. This is part of a big idea and a simple idea, which is that we can, we can do things. We can make a difference in the things that we do. Um, and we don't have to just sit there and shrug and, and, and moan. You know, that, oh, it's too bad, it's too bad. No, you can go out and engage and do something. And so I hope, if nothing else, people take a lesson from that and find something that they themselves can personally do and choose to do it. I couldn't have said it better myself. Joe, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us and tell us about your adventures. And I hope we can talk to you when you get back and tell us more about uh, about the experience. I'd be happy to. I'll have a lot more to say. (laughs) (laughs) Great. Joe Rohde, everybody. Thanks very much, Joe.